You recording? Mm. All right, guys. This is the ISX um, 15. This one is on the Kenworth 2016 T680. You got the oil sensor started blinking red. It did it like a month ago, so my truck likes to warn me. To get this off, this is stupid. What you'll have to do is you use this little groove right here as leverage. This pin will be pushed in. And you can't get to it with a flathead. I tried that. That doesn't work. But you take this. Push red clip in from the left out to the other side. Right, it was so easy. It took me like a half an hour to figure that out. So now, as you can see, this was the problem. See the oil's in there. The oil got in there, and it's messing with the connection. So I got some of this. We're going to spray that out real quick, clean it up real quick. Then we're going to take that, that uh, sensor out with a deep well 27 millimeter um, socket, deep well socket. Shouldn't get the stuff on my hands, but I don't have a choice. I don't have nothing else. I would def definitely recommend doing this because the oil, I guess the sense of fail where oil gets into them. And you don't want to see how it's taking all that grease and gunk out. Just spray that stuff, man. It's quick drying. And then, shoot, I spray the can now because you don't want to do this again. I'm telling you, you guys do not want to do this again. Get your little handy dandy light. Cause you know, you and your wife or you and your friend ain't gonna be able to fit right there. And my wife, she likes to disappear. She just, <laughs> she just goes bye bye. Um, but she's holding the camera now, so thank God. And see, now it's cleaned out. I do that one time, wipe it out, make it look kind of new. Then I don't know if you guys can see. You see that right there with my fingers pointing? See my finger, can you see in there? You can't see in there yet. I'll let you know when she focuses. She tells me she sees all that oil back there. Hold on, you can't see my fingers, so all yeah, I see is You got the camera right from the bar. Go down, and it's in there. That, right there. It's real greasy. I'm gonna take it out and show it to you, but it's grease all around it. And that was the issue too, is shooting it through there for some reason, the plastic must have failed. Yeah, the plastic must have cracked because it's a plastic thing. So we're gonna come back and show you it out and what it looked like when it comes out. I'm gonna spray that connector one more time though because I'm just extra like that. Not extra, but I'm real cautious about that. And I don't like doing stuff more than once. But I'm spraying it in there like I don't care. Spray that. Yeah. All right. I would recommend you guys get a shorty because uh, this was not convenient at all. I'm trying to do it this way, but I got it enough to break it. And I'm trying to get my hands. This is what it looks like. Oh, it's hot. Yeah, where's the cream going? Yep, so. Oh. You know, this is the original one because it still has the red paint on it, the red Cummings paint, which has never been changed. Look at all the oil up in there, guys. Oily, which means something failed in between somewhere internally. The gasket was still pretty good. That's, still, that's why there wasn't too much oil around it, but yeah, there we go. So the new one. I got from Canada. 
because I didn't want to wait because I figured something would happen, which it did. That's the reason I, I went to start it to do my pre-check. And Cummins, this is the part number. 492-1517, 492-1517. Worth. this cost me $90, of course, you know they upcharge you, but I didn't want to risk the fact of getting it from Amazon or someone for 34, and it'd be the one that goes for the 6.7 Cummins, the ones that go for the heavy duty Rams. Um, Cause uh, another trucker talked about that. Look, where it failed, and look, they got extra stuff around here, so they know it fails. Extra, it is, that's extra coating. I've never seen that around a sensor like that. Look at the difference. And the hole is bigger, too. Look at that. The hole is slightly bigger. But the prongs are exactly the same. It looks a lot more sturdy. So we're going to put it back in. Without further ado. Always hand screw stuff in first. Don't just try to put the socket on it because you risk stripping this hole. And if you strip this hole, that's why Kenworth would say you should have brought it to them. If you had, you would have brought to us. Let us charge you $1,500. Oh, God. It just fell. Oh, I found it. It fell. You don't want that to happen. I'm gonna try it again. It's this wire that they got right here in the damn way. So I would just say don't be gentle with it. Now I got it in there, got it started. You just screw that thing in. Screw it in, screw it in. Now I'm gonna give it one tight snug. So the socket 27 just on it like a glove no stripping no nothing once you can get it to fit on there stupid little thing hmm. I'm not having a harder time This red thing, there we go. Snug. Now, I gotta put it in between all these wires because I don't really use these sockets and I'm not a mechanic. So I only have one tool. <laughs> the right tool, there's no issues. This is a one and a half wrench, one and a half five inch extension going into the one and a half deep well, 22, sorry, 27 millimeter. Um, deep well socket. Just gonna snug it in and we should be done. Going back on the road. Low pressure is working perfectly fine. No red blinking dot. It's reading at the right hand side. It's moving. It's not going to the extreme to 100 like it was or dropping down to zero and having that red blinking light of death. Check the engine light went off and we're good to go. You can see no issues at all. Like and subscribe. Yeah, I say 12 to 15. Okay. Oh, pressure sensor? That's just the sensor. Plug -in, right? Yep. But they ridiculous. No, nah, that shouldn't be. It should be like them $100. So I found this sensor for 34 on Amazon, but not sure whether it's the one for the 6.7 or mine, but it says the same part number. But the guy said he ordered it on YouTube and it was um it looked it was the right part number was the wrong part so he ended up having to take it back out because the pigtails didn't match up mm -hmm. so they charged 90 dollars at kenworth for the part so now i'm curious of how much the labor is going to be because if i would have had all the right tools in the beginning mm -hmm. it's like a 10 minute job you just ask well, how many uh labor hours and you just try to get the gist of the watch right. they're they not even trying to answer that they didn't transfer you so Okay. Hi, yes. I'm calling to see uh, what it would cost uh, parts and labor to get a uh, um, fuel no. oil pressure sensor uh, replaced for, 2016. for uh, 2016 KW T680. T680. What kind of 
Uh, Cummings. Cummings. Okay. I'll have to give you the first permit. They'll have to give you a quote on the price for the part. I can't give you that. I can just give you labor. What's the labor? Uh, What's the you labor? Probably like two and a half to three hours, maybe. Okay. And what would that be roughly? Asking? What would that be? One seventy-nine an hour. One seventy-nine an hour. So one eighty times. You said three hours max. Yeah. Okay. We'll shoot high on it. You said three hours. Okay. So it's under six hundred. It's about five seventy. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. And that's for labor, you said. Yep. Okay. All right. And so the total ends up being six hundred and thirty dollars. I spent a hundred and forty dollars. Um, at the end of the day, you save roughly high 400, low 500s, doing 10 minutes of work yourself, which they say takes about three hours, which is ridiculous because it takes nowhere that long. Probably if you don't know how to disconnect that clip, but then again, doing it yourself would be the best option because then again, you know that it's done right, you see the results, and you save money. It's the best part. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Until next time.